I tried to scream. He held me like this. It was in around 6 p.m. He held me like this and told me in the story that if you ever scream, you are dead. My name is Intabisem Mahaswa. I'm 25 years of age. I grew up in Pumalanga. I was raised by my grandmother who was very, very old at her 100 years of age. Then me and my siblings, we don't have a memory of our mom. She passed away when we were so very, very young. And my father was never in the picture, but he was there, out there. So we never had a relationship with our father. The only time we saw our father it was on 2010 when we were about to bury him. So what happened is that after my granddaughter passed away, me and my siblings, we were still young, then we had to go to, they had to separate us, our two aunts, and then I went to stay in Sinchiron with the other aunt, and other siblings went to stay with the other aunts. So what happened, I went to Sinchiron, I stayed with my aunt, and then Haiti Fita thing. she never looked for school for me. So I actually stood go to Sinchiron, because I came to school for almost two months. Then I met a lady who was her, science girlfriend then she looks for school for me in Oliven. Hagi Fitako thing things were hectic because they literally abused me emotionally. They literally took all the social grind and bought food and everything then I had nothing. I had no money to go to school. I had nothing to do to use for me personally, cosmetics and everything. But I just appreciate the fact that Horeke Kaskolon on now and again. Then throughout all that year I couldn't study, I couldn't do anything because I was literally, literally depressed because the treatment was very bad. I had to take care of everything in the house and in that house, I literally no care everyone. I ate her as they please. So I couldn't even invite my friends over to come and see me and all of that. Then after I failed that grade 11, I called my aunt in Central and told her that I want to come back. I can't stay here. It's a little, little hard because they even blamed me that I'm playing. I don't study and everything. So as time goes by, Kawela Maraho to Sinchuron. I got there. I was staying with his two, her two sons, the, his husband and my aunt. So then, Kharidu Lakotengi, my aunt couldn't even give me attendance for a taxi to school. So I had to get those buses to Satuan. And by that time, around 2015, 2014, the buses were not really good. There were times when they wouldn't even come. So I had to make sure I found a way to go to school. I find money to go back to go to school because then I was Fiona. So she couldn't even give me money. And she had a son who was... 30 years of age, we looked at and room called and paying his food and everything. I would ask her fair friend to go to school. She wouldn't even give me that. It has always been that issue, Hore. I wouldn't even ask anything because I knew Hore at all. And the sad part was that I couldn't even have pets. It was on 2015 and 2016, that's when I've learned to use Lisela for Peda. When I'm on my menstruation, I knew Hori, I have to be as I have to isolate myself from my friends and everything because I feel like and everything because I could feel the blood. But then because Lisila Lisila absorb my see and those things, they felt like okay, I need to keep myself not close to people so that I cannot see what I'm going through. They cannot feel or cannot smell whatever that is happening with me. I went through all of that. It's all like a school. And sometimes I wouldn't even go to school because I had no money. And the driver sometimes, in a Chalkhanya situation, would give me ticket to Mahala, but then the bus is not reliable. Sometimes he wouldn't even come. Then I'm not going to school. Then what happened is that after then, I, after I my grade 11, I passed it. Kayako metric, Kayaki Fitla metric, things were just the same. Then I decided to find a church. Then it happened, Hori, she didn't want it like at all because when am I gonna get a bone? So I would, I would literally go to church without bathing at all because if I bath in the morning, they will know that I'm going to church. So what happened is that when I tell the pastor, I says, Hori, this is my situation, they'll be like, I must never come back to church because if anything happens to me, they will never be reliable of that. They will never take me, they don't know where to take me, they will never know where to take me if anything happens to me. 
So I forced myself to go to church all the time. I forced myself. And the sad part, I always knew my aunt would force me to go to the church also. I went to the, to my church that I adored. Then I had to, after coming back, I bath and go to the church. Like a long distance from Hanops to Bromberic. After Centurion Mall, I had to walk as a girl child to go to church. But it was something that I'm, I'm, I had to enjoy. So I went there for almost a year. Then what happened is that the husband passed on. It was very a very traumatic situation where he had to take out. Like I could literally see him vomiting blood that night. I was in my metric. He vomited blood until he died in front of my eyes with my aunt. Then after that, months later, my aunt just changed everything. And when I was still at school, my sister called me and when I at my school and told me that my aunt doesn't want us anymore. She says she will never take care of kids that they are not here has. And then we are such headaches and everything. And I was the only one staying with her. So I didn't know where to go. I'm still new in town. And I came back and took all the, she was, she took all my clothes to the, these bin plastics, the black ones, and put them inside. I remember I walked from the house to the text, not knowing actually where I'm going, but I had to take them and go. Then I went to a friend to stay at her place because her mom was not around. So when I get there, I started attending while there and everything. Then the mother, when she came back, she decided to say, there is no way that somebody can come and stay in the place without paying rent. Though I had to pay rent or buy food. Then I didn't have even money to do that. I met a lady who was teaching me physical science. Then I told her the story. She decided to buy me pets and everything and buy the family food. Then I, while I was still staying in that house, I had to move because the lady I was, I came with, I came through her. She was somebody who left going out and everything. And sometimes she would come in the middle of the night and the mother would tell me, I must never open for the lady when she comes in late. So there was no way I was not going to open for the lady because I came through her. So we started fighting there and everything. Then I had to move from home to home. Then it happened that after I finished, close to finishing my metric, I met a guy. Then I felt like I fell in love with the guy. Then he asked me to have a baby with him. Then I fell for it and did that. Less did I know that I was not fully, fully ready for that. But because all I ever wanted was to feel safe, was to feel loved and all that, I did that. And we had a baby. Just after we had a baby, the guy started actually abusing me. So he started beating me up. Then the first thing that happened is that when I, he gave me a home and that was the only thing that I ever wanted because I had no place to go to. And he knew that no matter what he does, I have no way to run to. And there's nobody that I'm going to tell that this is happening to me. I had to endure the pain. It started as a first lab. I, it, I just, he asked forgiveness. I forgave him that it was okay. He would take some time to beat me up because he would make me forget. And I would literally feel like, okay, it's okay. Now that we are okay. Then sometime later, does it again. So it actually took me a whole entire four years of him and enjoying the pain of beating me because I, the only thing that he gave me was a home. And that thing, I appreciated it. I thought maybe I owe him something in my life because he gave me something that I ever needed in my life was a home, a shelter, and a family. Thinking, from, thinking that from my background, I grew up without both parents. All I ever wanted is to raise my babies, my kids, with a family, and I love and experience that. So he continued beating me up, beating me up, and I enjoyed it. I have never shared it with anyone, even my closest sister or anybody, my friends and everything I had to enjoy. I would go to school, to the college, with bruises and everything, wear sunglasses and all that. 
because I had to hide the pain. As times go, that the moment that I felt like this is getting real is that is when we had a fight. It was in the middle of the night, in front of my baby. He kicked me, like at the at my back. I couldn't even walk. I was lying on the floor. That's when I started to realize that this is real, because all the time it was just a slap a punch and all that and I was like it's okay I forgive but the minute I realized that I can't walk I went to my aunt the other aunt to my melody I got he drove me there when I got there I told my aunt and my aunt told me to go to the to the clinic it was an, a doctor I went there and they told me that I have to tell the doctor that I fell I was exercising this is the father of my child I need to protect then we have to fix things and everything. I believed because, okay, I was still in love. And my family, the only thing they couldn't give me was a home where I would feel loved, where I would feel appreciated. I literally had to enjoy the abuse. Then I got there, I, could, I went to the doctor, I did the same thing they told me to do. I got home, stood there for some time, then went back to the guy. He took his time without beating me and everything, trying to fix things and all that. But it continued with time. It became even worse because now it was not even about me doing something feeling or him feeling insecure or anything. If anything happens, like holding my phone, my phone ring that I don't answer, I would even get a slap for that. I would answer everything. Why are you coming back from school late? This and that, those things I had to answer for them. Sometime along the way, I, 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 I literally got sick. I started to, 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 to fall out of love. Then I had to start smoking some weed. I had to, to get drunk. Like literally on those days of lockdown, I started drinking a lot. Because I wouldn't even go to intimacy with him without me, with, with a sober mind. I wouldn't do that because it was a struggle for me to feel anything. I had to make sure that I'm under certain substance for me to get intimacy with him. So I continued living like that and he had this access to my family, my sister and everyone telling them that I'm the wrong one. Every time when he beats me, he will blame me, he will blame me for everything. Like, you are the wrong one and even tell my family that I'm wrong. So I wouldn't even have an opportunity to tell my family side of my story because he already did. So I just kept quiet and like, let them believe what they want to believe. But my biggest prayer was like, I want to come out alive. So I, I, I stood most of the time staying there praying that, you know what, even if this is what it is, maybe I'll come out okay and alive. Let me just enjoy it. So I went through all of that, all those years with him beating me up and everything. With living with bruises every day now and again. After a, it was on 2020, I decided to leave. After I left, I got sick, very, very, very sick, where I had, my body was swollen, all of it, and itchy. Then I went back to him because I, I, I literally felt like I'm helpless. I have no way to go. I went back to the same guy that was abusing me and thought things would be okay because I left him for some time. Maybe he has recovered whatever issues that is going through. Only did I know that it was just going to be the worst thing ever. The guy would kick me and even tell me that if I scream, he's going to kill me. Because wherever we're staying, it was a, in, a, in an apartment, a flat, where you can hear some sound from the next door. So he will literally tell me that, or, or hold me like this, and tell me that if ever you scream, I am going to kill you. So I had to enjoy and stop, not even, not even cry. And uh, he, he was in a point where he didn't even care whether that his child sees it or not. He would even do it in front of my daughter and beat me and blame me for doing that. Blame me for anything. Blame me for beating me. So I would, I, I would apologize. I would ask for witness for the things that I don't even know. And at some point, 
he will tell me that if I, 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 I don't want to be here, you can leave. And the only thing I was scared of is, 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 is leaving because I didn't know where to go. I would literally pack my things or say, yeah, I'm going to leave. He will just throw all of my clothes and my daughter's clothes outside and say leave in the middle of the night. So there was a friend next door I would just run to and sleep and come back in the morning and talk and fix things. I would ask forgiveness because I knew deeply that as for me, I have no way to go. I'm still trying to figure out my life and everything. Then what happened is that as time goes by, I got a sponsor to sponsor my studies, a bursary, where I started, I was like, no, I'm going back to school. When I started pulling myself up and trying to figure things out for myself, he started being jealous and thinking maybe I will leave and cheat and everything. Then he started doing the same thing again, that you are not going to leave. Now that I supported you, I've been there for you. You are not going to leave this house. You are not going to leave that. And I, I, had, to, I had to stay because I knew, what I, yeah, it's okay. I'm, I'm here. I'm not going anywhere. Because for me, it was that thing, I want my daughter to grow up with both parents in a loving family. And I thought, I'm just giving her a home. But less did I know that it's just traumatizing the baby and it's not even healthy for the baby. So I stood there and lived for four years. The only time I left, it was early 2021, last year around January. He got my phone. After he found my phone, he found out that I'm looking for a place to rent. Then he started fighting me. After he slapped me, I was with my daughter. Then I decided to say, today I know this guy is going to kill me because he told me life that if you are not going anywhere. So I, 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 I went up. It was a flat. I went up. Uh, by the, the windows upstairs, they don't have the back glass. So I decided to jump the window. So I told my daughter that I'm coming back, just sit here because he was staying. The guy was out sitting in the couch in the kitchen, holding my phone and searching it and everything. So I was like, I know that is going to kill me because I'm telling people about these things and I'm tired. I'm starting to talk about it. So he, I went there, I jumped on top of a toilet that was upset. In Kasi, there is these things, the way there are rooms out there and, there, and jumped into the next door. When I got there outside, I asked some guy to give me the stairs so that I can come down, then he did that. Less did I know that guy saw me. When I came out of the gate, he, was, he ran after me. I tried to scream, he hold me like this. It was in, around six. PM, he hold me like and told me in the story that if you ever scream, you are dead. I I had to pretend like there's nothing going on, even the people were passing by, because he told me that he is gonna kill me. He faced me from the street and after he took me and told me that if I scream, he's gonna kill me. So I had to go back because I couldn't even run and that's like okay, let's go back. He was like, let's go and talk. By that time, I didn't even care jumping the floor was going to kill me or anything. The only thing was just I have to run for my life. Because I felt, I knew that when he's angry how he was, he was like. So I felt like this day is gonna, he's going to kill me. So I decided to, to run. Then he faced me. After faced me, take me back to the house. When he got there, he started talking and told me that it's fine. You can pack your things and go. Just sleep because it's already late. I was so, so, so miserable. I was broken and everything because that's when the whole thing ended. That's when I decided to leave until today. I had to start with my four-year-old daughter alone and find a place to stay because in my family, the only thing that they always reminded me, they saw him as a perfect man for me. They would say him as a good man and as a bad guy. Maybe whatever that he was feeding them, or whatever that he was giving them to my family, they believed that I was the one who's wrong all along. So I had to never talk about it and say my story because everyone believed what they wanted to believe. But now I'm in a point where I'm actually raising a child who asked me that why my father was beating you. Why was he doing this and that? Because he literally remembers everything. 
it, it, it is something that I, I, I would even ask myself that do I really have to I had to go through all of it that from being mistreated to my own sister's mom and to finding a man that still reminds me of where I am coming from instead of him building me up and making me a better person or being a better person through him. But it had to bring it all up that I'm just here for me to suffer through him and I had to enjoy everything that I'm going through. But I'm just grateful that it happened. I've, I've learned I had to grow. Even before time, I had to become a woman. I had to... I had to mature so that I think it was just preparing me for better days because where I am now I have found peace by myself so I, I, I have learned to stay calm I have learned to be at peace because whatever that I have been through it have kept me in a point where I had to remember that one day it's gonna make sense and then maybe this is the journey i had to cherish and i had to enjoy and it is a lesson that I, like, I it is a lesson that i've learned and i've grown from it so what am i doing now i'm, I'm a medical assistant student i'm finishing next day june so i'm actually surviving through my practicals and everything and staying with my daughter i've rented a place where i'm staying with her so I've, I've, that's where I've actually found that I can actually, I have a potential. That's where I've actually had to bring my capabilities as a woman that I can do it alone and I will be able to survive. So yeah, I'm, that's where I'm, I'm gaining my strength that whatever that is happening to me, it was meant to be. It was meant to happen because I've learned, I've grown and I've become a better person. Somebody that is going through an abuse, not knowing what to do. It is better to run away as soon as you can. So many women have, di have died through the hands of men that claim to love them. No matter what you can do or whatever that you can think of, if he cares for you, he won't abuse you. Don't stay in a, in a relationship that is so abusive. Don't stay. He will never change. It will start as a slap, to a punch, to a kick, to death. It's better to come out alive than with a coffin. It is better to start a life all over again than wanting to think that what people will say about you. Whatever picture that of a relationship you have given to people, it has nothing to do with you. You don't owe anybody an explanation of that relationship that is abusing you. Just stay out of it while you still can because tomorrow you might die and those people that will live freely and happy so for me i would say it's not worth it to stay in a relationship that is abusive what's meant for you won't harm you it won't sabotage your happiness and your peace in everything you do choose your peace choose your sanity choose to love and appreciate yourself you don't deserve to stay in a relationship because there is money, there is anything that you have been offered. And you will never recognize or realize your full potential until you stand alone and say, I'm doing this. You need to stand up by yourself as a woman and you will see your full potential, your self actualization that you will realize that, you know what, I'm capable of so many things, then I can do it. Hi, I'm Tavisa Mahaswa. I have been through the most.